Now I can hear you now. Oh damn, that's these motherfucking headphones, then. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I've, I haven't been able to hear you for probably, well, pretty much since before you got onto the data sheet. Get out of here. Yeah, it's when you was drawn on the, uh, you were drawing the red arrows and stuff with the red oh. annotate. That's the last time I could hear you. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. All right. So basically, what I was saying though is, um, when I'm looking at price. I can be able to see if there's strength or weakness throughout the month. And the reason why that's important is once the next month opens up, it's going to give you, you need some sort of um, bias as far as the fundamentals go. And it, it also help you with NFP as we talk about, but that's a whole nother game when it comes to that. Um, but most importantly is to keep track of the data because this is all this is, this is data. So I can see strength and weakness over time. Because that's how I'm getting to tell if the U.S. dollar is truly strong or if the European euro is truly uh, weak, let's just say. And that stuff is important because it helps us confirm our technicals. Um, as I was saying before, to kind of bring the point together is the way to, the way to confirm technicals is with your fundamentals. Okay, so let's check the DXY. And we do the same thing. Every time I look at this currency uh, index, I want to be sure that I'm keeping track of um, at least a time or day. You don't have to do like if I check it one more time throughout the day, I'm not going to put it on here as long as I got it for that day. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's a dramatic you know, change overall. But the important thing is just to keep track of it. OK, so we update our data sheet every week. Um, we update our charts as well every week the same way and which I'm going to show you on the charts here is just a technical analysis um, idea, let's say. All right, I'll just copy this. All right, so it's a real big advantage for the euro versus the dollar tomorrow. Um, and that's the important thing. Uh, and the reason why this webinar is actually important too. And I'm gonna show you in just a second, as soon as I update this. Okay, so when you look fundamentally at the global economic calendar for tomorrow, and I'll go over those numbers in a second. There's no events coming out, but there's 20 events coming out for the US dollar, okay? So however you wanna spin this, you know, to be, the Euro doesn't have any fundamentals to fight off, you know, US fundamentals, let's just say, both the micro and the macroeconomic events. There's no events um, for the Euro tomorrow, at least according, now let me just at least say that, at least according to daily FX calendar, you know, there's no events for tomorrow at all uh, for the Euro. So compared to 20 events coming out for the US dollar, basically tomorrow starting at 1245, you know, all the way to 2230, you know, and they, these are these are important events, you know, these are both micro and macroeconomic events, but these have some, um, important strength justification as far as the direction goes so just keep an eye on that and keep an eye on the dollar like if you just see the dollar begin to drastically like increase or something like that um, i think it'd be the best opportunity um to do this kind of strategy or idea here so the idea i kind of came up with over the weekend it's basically no matter what, you know, but no matter what, once the market kind of ranges out and exhausts out, um, I got a few areas that I'm actually interested in selling, you know, and just even seeing this, this uh, fundamental, op fundamental opportunity uh, within the global economic calendar as far as Euro having no sort of economic events coming out, um, it kind of can justify this sort of setup and approach, you know, so it kind of confirms why I have outlook as as far as to even sell at these certain levels, um, just based off of that expectation alone now. And the no, another thing about that is it's going to happen quite uh, quite frequently in uh, July 
for the Euro. I don't know why, but it's just the way it is. Like some days they're not really having nothing going on. And if we can see kind of what's, what happens when, you know, a country doesn't have any micro or macroeconomics to kind of defend itself, um, to me, I think it's a, a good opportunity because I can already see price technically is beginning to exhaust itself, you know. Um, but I mean, it's still technically in a buy. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the that Euro USD is not in a buy right now because it currently is. I'm just far, saying as far as the exhaustion goes and the exhaust of, you know, these uh, certain waves that the market is making, you know, is um, is really like there's going to be some good opportunities to short, let's say, and some good opportunities to short for a while to really capitalize off of some real um, market structure. Because the most important thing that I want you to remember is that fundamentals or technical support fundamentals. You know, it's not the other way around. It's important to really realize that. So based off of, like I said, the both the economic uh, circumstances and the technical overview too, um, it just kind of supports uh, some some selling pressure coming soon, you know, once the markets begin to exhaust, you know, and like I say, it's currently is in a buy, but tomorrow is a, a tricky day. Tomorrow is a tricky day to, and uh, really to pay attention to no news for a specific country is a um, a good opportunity. So again, and and I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we go to the global economic calendar. Then we're gonna go over to daily FX and just specifically look at the uh, look at Tuesday the twenty fifth, um, and just to show you that there there really was no uh, events the last time I checked in. Like I said, that was like one twenty two p.m., but I doubt anything changed for Tuesday. Um, but I'm gonna pull it up so y'all can see. So compared to the U.S. dollar that has twenty events coming out tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a good opportunity if the dollar can actually do some sort of um, give us some good news, let's just say. So I say tomorrow was at least 1400, which would be two o'clock p.m. Um, was the rest of the, you know, the conference board ex, uh, expectations and all of that stuff come out. Um, we should start to see the natural direction of the market. Um, and we can just play it, play it by sight. So once that happens, we'll kind of know where to where to expect the market to go. And that's how you use fundamentals to kind of relate to our fundamentals and technicals both together to confirm your bias. So it's important for you to always confirm it and and don't get antsy. You know, don't always think you've got to be trading all the time because it's not important to do that. It's more important to have calculated risk overall. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's finish updating this data sheet, and then we'll review it. So I got. I'm gonna just check the uh, or go over these different uh, volume areas and uh, why volume is important. So volume is just giving us a good idea as how much cash flow is being traded at that specific time. Um, there is ways to kind of quantify it, but it's not official quantification. It's just a way to our idea to kind of understand which way to market it, um, where the most cash is being uh, flowed. Is it being with the buyers or is it with the sellers? So we pay attention to the volume and we look at basically this is volume here. So currently the volume is at 3.51 thousand. Um, and this is what I'll do now. So I'll just come down here. I'm on an hour chart. I'm gonna update my volume. So every time that I'm looking at these different things, I want to be sure to confirm or to, to write it down because this is the data. This is the important stuff. And the more you get into trading and, and not even just trading, the more you get into investing, you'll understand how important it is to keep track of all the data, you know, that, and especially this volume because this is basically the cash flow. This is the money that's flowing within the markets currently. So one hour, 
chart. Zero six, twenty four, twenty nineteen. All right, so I would do the same thing for the fifteen minute chart. Uh, I'm gonna look at the volume and everything, but I'm not gonna do that currently. Let's go back to technicals real quick, and let me just go over just the order of operations. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm going to just point it out on my chart. And that way you guys can have a clear cut idea of exactly what that is. And the reason why it's important to do the order of operation is because you it allows you to know what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. But you got to really be, you got to really understand the rules behind each order. Um, and without understanding the rules behind each order, it doesn't really help you, you know, to understand what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. That's why little, even little webinars like this is important to really tune you up and keep you on point, you know? And, but let's go over the order of operation. So the first step is to check the indexes. That's to create the bias, okay? Um, and basically when we do that, it just allows us to, it allows us to not predict, you know, and uh, only react to what we see. <clears throat> now, hang on, y'all give me one second. All right, so step two, as I was saying, is the support and resistance. This is basically the trap that we create. All right, so the trap is basically looking at the market and looking at its immediate highs and its immediate low. So let's say this is current market movement, something like this. I don't know, whatever. I don't know, that's a bad example. Hold on. <laughs> I ain't a painter. <laughs> All right, so what I mean by immediate highs and lows is this first movement here is a noticeable direction, okay? And this second movement here is the noticeable change of direction. So what this helps us do is it helps us create a trap and put the market within a range. Okay, that range is the high and the low. Why is that important? Because the range allows measurement. We can measure the range from its high and its low. That's with the Fibonacci retracement where we do all of the 38-2 zones. So let's get right into the 38-2 zones, triggers, okay? These are the triggers. Triggers allow you to know where to get in. Okay. You can get in at, let's say, a 38.2 zone, which would be using our Fibonacci retracement tool. You can get in using channels. Okay. And you can also get in using accumulation zones. Right. So, what each one of these three things do is it helps us with entries. Now, exits are a little bit different because it's definitely about experience and it's also about understanding your own psychological and your own, you know, loop that you go through. Um, so the next thing is cycles. Cycles is these retracements, these pullbacks. What these pullbacks do or show us is it shows us a pattern that we can follow. And that's where we get the concept of, let's say an uptrend goes up, down, up, down, up, down, okay? It gives us a pattern that we can follow, vice versa for a downtrend, down, up, down, up. So these are cycles, beginning, confirmation, continuation, and then let's just say the end. All right. Now, session breaks is a little bit different. Session breaks are basically 
the different things that happen during once different markets open. So let's just say, again, more patterns. So let's say this is the New York trend, the New York session, which is a new trend, represents new trend. So just think New York, new trend. Then you get Asian session. Asian session represents retracement. Okay. From the Asian session, you go into the London session. London session is the true trend. Okay, so what this would do is it will go up. It would follow the new trend that was created during the New York session and the retracement already occurred during the Asian session. So what does this show us again? That market structure, because remember, what does the market do? Up, down, up, right? So this helps us with timing. The session breaks helps us with timing. When would be the best time to get in the markets? Obviously during the retracement. Okay, so when you trade, it's important for you to utilize the entire strategy as, as a whole and not just itsy bitsy pieces. Because if you don't utilize it as a whole, you're going to keep doing, you know, making mistakes and not knowing what you did wrong. Because what I mean by what you did wrong is let's just say um, the market did, you know, continued to go down, you know, over here for a little while, let's say like this, the London session. What helps us understand that sort of movement that's out of market structure is our fundamentals, that data sheet, the fundamentals and confirmations from there. So if some sort of economic events came out and caused the market to retrace again, that would be the only reason for it, for the simple facts that technicals must support fundamentals. Okay. I'm going to write that all the way out for you. Remember that technicals must support fundamentals. And that's the basic rule of operation order of operation. This is how you set up your charts every time. Okay, once you got that set up and all of that complete, you go into what you've been working on over time. Because once you understand that it's a profession and not something that's just random and like easy, you're gonna be more calculated with your risk and with your understanding of just the information that you obtain. So you got to know how to use that information to your advantage. And that's what this data sheet allows you to do too. It allows you to use the information that kind of, and the, uh, let's just say, uh, yeah, the information, just the repetition of constant information to create some sort of patterns. Because it's basically uh, the market structure is showing us some sort of pattern recognition and um, real sense of movement. As we look here at the, <clears throat> we just looked at the, uh, and that for what is this, the volume on what is Euro USD. When we take a look at the volume again, now it's at 5.1, uh, oh, it's at 5.2, uh, damn, 224,000 um, volume points, basically. So these are points. This volume is increased, which obviously don't show us if we go to the chart, is the market probably broke out. Okay, some sort of uh breakout. Let's see on the 15 minutes so to a small time. Oh no. Kind of just range and still. Okay, so that's basically what 
we do and how we put all the pieces together, let's say, and um, really get a clear understanding of each step is important. No step is to be overlooked, you know, and just updating the information and updating your charts, updating your, um, your data sheet. And when I'm looking at the data sheet in the events, let me just jump down to the events real quick. Yes, we keep track of the just ratios, um, but the events are important. Every time each one of these events, events come out, I'm basically creating a table of positive and negative events. Those positive and negative events is showing me a variable difference. Which one is stronger or weaker? The same thing that we do in currency. Um, when we trade currency and exchange of it. And the reason why that's important is it shows us how the economy is doing as a whole. Has this economy have been having, you know, um, constant bad luck when it comes to economic structure, economic uh, um, achievements and, pro and, uh, and uh, progress, let's just say. And what I mean is more positive events than negative, because once I see the market hat or the, the fundamentals show me that the events are more negative than positive, I know that economy is weak. If I have more positive than negative events, I know that economy is strong. So each um, each one of these currencies I'm keeping track of, and I'm keeping track of every event that comes out, no matter if it's a high or a low um, news event. I just want to see if it increased or decreased as in far as as far as if that was the appropriate outlook for it, because some things are good, you know, when they decrease and some things are bad when they decrease. So you gotta really read the titles of the events and read what they previously were as well. So you can really uh, clearly see what's going on. So like with the Euro this month, really the Euro has 32 negative events and 27 positive events so far. So really the Euro is weak. And with no news coming out tomorrow for it, there's nothing going to be, nothing to really hold that and justify that. So we'll see Euro begin to decline. And I can definitely say that with confidence, um, but, I, but just simple fundamentals, you know, um, as long as these events for the U S dollar come out strong, we, I'll definitely start to um, look for sale opportunities, but I'm going to keep track of my technicals as well and use my triggers as entry uh, points rather than just trying to jump in the market blind. But this is what you, this is what you want to go through every time, the order of operation, follow each one of those steps. And really, I'm going to end our webinar here, y'all. Uh, for my few people that did get on, I appreciate y'all. And for the people that's going to watch it later, um, just keep studying. Y'all already know. Um, I'll talk to y'all fellas later. Who's that, Rob? Yo, TJ, what's up, man? Good shit, bro. Nothing, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to... Uh -huh. Hang on, hang on. Let me start recording. Hold on. <laughs>